Hello and welcome to the Rhoda Engine Camellia and Magnolia Group. I'm Mark Bobin, Communications Officer for the group, but also Head Gardener here at Minton Gardens. And I'm Wendelin Morrison. I'm Events Coordinator for the group and I also work at Minton Gardens. Today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of the group. And I'm going to tell you what we do right now. In March 1915, four friends, all passionate about plants, came together at the Lanarth Estate on the Lizard Peninsula in Cornwall to create the Rhododendron Society. Percival D. Williams, the owner of Lanarth, his cousin, John C. Williams of Carehays Estate in Cornwall, Charles Earley, gardener and horticultural writer, and John G. Millay, artist and gardener. The founding members invited people from their social circle to join the society. Among those early members from Ireland were Sir John Ross of Bladensbury, the then chief of the Dublin Metropolitan Police and creator of the famous garden at Ross Trevor in County Down. Also, Sir Frederick W. Moore, the then keeper of the Royal, now National, Botanic Gardens at Glasnevin and an international authority on rhododendrons, and president of the then Royal Horticultural Society of Ireland. They were also joined by Hugh Armitage Moore of County Down, and the following year, 1917, by the Marquis of Headfort, Kells in County Meath, who sponsored plant hunters like his friend George Forrest, also joined the Rhododendron Society. The first annual general meeting of the Rhododendron Society took place at the Chelsea Flower Show on the 23rd of May 1916, the same year as the first publication of the Rhododendron Society notes. The notes were a significant part of the Society's activity, sharing among its small membership specialist writings on the genre. The notes, however, became increasingly in demand by other enthusiasts, and therefore the publication was increased and made more widely available. In 1927, the Society still consisted of only 25 members from the landed gentry and their social circle. But with increasing interest in competitive rhododendron shows and the success of the notes, it was decided at the annual general meeting in May that they would disband the society and reform as the Rhododendron Association. The association began to publish a yearbook in 1929 which came to include an annual list of all hybrid crosses and the name of the grower. This was an important development, as previously the parentage of hybrids could be closely guarded in order to maintain the cachet and profile of an estate's rhododendron collection. The yearbook became enormously successful and a highly regarded publication in the world of horticulture and by 1939 the association had grown to 378 members. The membership now included not only men and women who were estate owners, nurserymen and head gardeners, but also international members from across Europe, Canada, the USA, Australia, New Zealand and Japan. and the association became a member group of the RHS. In 1954, Camellias also joined in with the rhododendrons as a second genre. It wasn't until 1973 that Magnolias joined.
joins the interests of the group. In 2013, there was a change in charity laws, and it was decided that groups such as the Rhododendron, Camellia and Magnolia member group became independent, which we remain today. The descendants of those three founding friends are still within the group today. David Millay, Charles Williams and Rupert Ely are still very much involved in the running as well as the community of the Rhododendron, Camellia and Magnolia group. The RCM Group is an international charitable organisation which aims to promote and further the knowledge of the three genre. We do this actively through conservation work. We also offer bursaries. We have fantastic competitive shows and then also have a whole range of new and exciting online events. I'd like to talk to you about a few aspects of the group. The first being the bursary scheme. Now the bursary scheme was set up to provide funding for anybody who would like to further their knowledge and conservation of the three genre. This could be something along the lines of an expedition or research into magnolias. Now for more information, please visit our website. Over the last year, a lot has changed. So we now offer a fabulous program of online events, including lectures and video snippets. We also have a lot of videos and, and a lot of photos coming through on our platforms, which include Instagram, Twitter, we have a Facebook group, and also a Facebook forum. Now we also have all of these videos and many more on our YouTube channel. So again, please check all of these out. The RCM Group achieves extraordinary charitable work through its members, from conserving and developing historic as well as newly established collections through to your back garden. Not only this, the group is a friendly international community supporting each other with a shared love of rhododendrons, camellias and magnolias. Thank you from the rhododendron, camellia and magnolia group and please visit our website for more information.